Welcome to the Kinsman Die Podcast, home of fantasy fiction based on Norse mythology that's written and read by me, Matt Bishop. I've written two novels, Kinsman Die and Dark Grows the Sun. They are the first two books in my series called And the Heavens Burn. In this podcast, I will read both books and, when it's finally finished, that third concluding book in the series. My goal is to share my love of Norse mythology and, obviously, my books. I believe I've done something unique when it comes to retelling these old stories. The point of view characters in my books are the Asir themselves, Odin and Frigg, Vidar, Hodor, Loki, and just for fun because the dude is awesome and has a really tough name to pronounce, Vathrudnir. Everything you'll hear is based on my interpretation of the source materials, the Poetic Edda and the Prose Edda, along with a stack of books that discuss the myths and another stack of academic articles that do the same. Right now, I'm planning to read one chapter per week. Every five episodes will be a combination recap and explication of how I incorporated the myths and why I made the choices I did, without spoilers. Like River Song, I frown upon spoilers. Kinsman Die has 92 chapters. Dark Grows the Sun is about half that. So, this is going to take a while. I truly hope you enjoy the journey. Before I begin, let me just say... I'm learning the art of podcasting as I go. I'll do my absolute best to produce a quality product for your listening pleasure. And I'm just a writer reading his book. I'll do my best not to suck too bad. So my friends, strap on your iron gauntlets, hold fast to Mjolnir, whirl it round and round, and hang on. Wrong mythic universe entirely. Let's do this. Chapter 1. Frigg. White breath pluming behind her and fear making her heart pound even harder. Frigg tugged at the edges of her cloak and flickered into her falcon shape. She shot forward like an arrow. Up ahead, the longhouse's double doors were thrown wide to release two alivar thralls carrying a body outside on a litter, their long shadows keeping pace. But this was no body, this was Balder, her son. It had happened yet again. Her sharpened sight picked out air. Gladsheim's chief Valkyr, directing the Alvar thralls to rest the litter on the stone table in a clearing beside the longhouse. She flared her wings and her booted feet touched snowy earth. Air, how is he? With a quick gesture, Air sent the shaven-headed Alvar thralls away. She dug two fingers into Baldur's wrist and met Frigg's gaze evenly. His heart still beats, all mother, faintly. A broken, relieved sob came from beside the longhouse. Nana stood in the pooling light from within the house. Her hands were cupped around her nose and mouth. Her shoulders shook with the strength of her sobs. Nana had been dealing with these mysterious, death-like dreams of Baldur's alone for nearly half a year now. Just as Frigg herself had been alone for the past twenty winters, ever since her husband, Odin, had set out westward. Except that Nana's solitude had ended, while Frigg's persisted. Frigg blew out a long breath and laid her hand on Baldur's brow just as she had when he'd twisted in the throes of some childhood fever. His face was stone cold. If she tried, she could still see his pudgy, grinning child's face smeared with honey after he and his brother Hodor had raided the larder. But she didn't try, not with him laid out like a corpse before her. This is the worse than the last one, Frigg said, keeping her voice low. It is indeed, all mother. All air set a cup on the stone behind, behind Baldur's head. How is any of this even possible? The old magic should have kept him safe against all injury. Spears bounced off Balder as if the sky metal feared to hurt him. Even the venomous spittle of a snow bear ran from his skin like water. Air raised a skin, popped the stopper, and poured clear liquid into the cup. A strong, fruity scent assaulted Frigg's nose. Panic beat at Frigg like Jotun axes on a shield wall as she felt her hand growing cold in her son's grip. She shoved the panic back and stepped calmly into the space she claimed from it. There had to be an explanation for what was happening to her son, and it was not what her vision suggested would happen. It was not. Air dipped a spoon in the elixir. Excuse me, old mother. Frigg removed her hand from Baldur's forehead, but kept a tight grip on his hand. Should I open his mouth? No, he'll choke. Air pulled Baldur's lower lip downward with one neat, clean thumb and wet his lips with the elixir. It pulled in the hollow she'd made and ran down his cheek. She dabbed it with a cloth. This is the second dose, Air said. Harnana insisted that he be brought outside to be touched by Saul's light. Nana had claimed that sunlight helped bring Baldur's spirit back to his body from the shores of the Gyal. 
But how could Saul's light fix this? She herself was more confident in Eir's elixir. Balder himself had distilled it from Yggdrasil's fruits. It had brought him back before, it would do so again. Silence descended on the small clearing, aside from her thumping heart. In that fleeting instant, Frigg wished that she weren't dealing with this alone. A month ago, she'd sat on her husband's high seat and sent her sight outward across the realms searching for him. When she'd finally found him, camped beside an unknown shore, he had looked up and very distinctly mouthed the words, I'll return at once. But he still wasn't back. Air again pressed two fingers to Baldur's wrist and watched his still chest and ashen face. Nana had told her that his dreams, these fits, were worsening, but Frigg hadn't believed it. Frigg hardly dared breathe. Her eyes darted from Air to Baldur and back again. Was this it then? Her unkillable son was dead? And how long would they stand here waiting? Dawn's light leaped into the silent clearing. Baldur gave a great rasping gasp as his chest expanded. Color flooded back into his face, and he blew out a long breath. Oh, thank Aegir. Nana rushed the last few paces and threw herself across her husband. Frigg felt warmth flood into her son's hand. She gave it a quick squeeze and stepped back to make room for Nana. Air's eyes were narrowed. Her grip on Baldur's wrist had tightened, but her shoulders looked less like a drawn bow. Baldur's eyes flew open. He looked wildly around and tried to sit up. All right, Baldur. Nana said with a sob, keeping him pinned, You're all right. Saul brought you back. Air took a step back, frowning, even as one of Baldur's arms came up and reflexively embraced Nana. Frigg watched the wildness and her son's eyes ease away. Squinting in the bright sunlight, he looked around, recognized who was around him, and said, voice flat, So, it happened again. She laid her hand on Baldur's shoulder, warm now as it should be. We'll get it figured out, she said. Freya will be here within a few nights for Ithaval. She can have... Excuse me, all mother. It was Gana, one of her maidservants. Gana braced her hands on her knees and bent over to drag in a ragged breath. Yes, my apologies, all mother, but Gana dragged in the breath. I bring news from the eastern gate. Hands on hips now, Gana hauled in another long full of air and wiped sweat from her face. Yes, Frigg said, for- forcing her voice to stay even. What is it? Gnaw Dr. Het. The Allfather has returned. Well, folks, that was chapter one of Kinsman Die. I hope you enjoyed it. We met Frigg and experienced with her the recurring, mysterious sickness of her son, Balder. I'm a big believer in value for value, so I have two requests. First, leave a review on whatever podcast app or platform you use. They really help. And please consider supporting my work by buying my books on Amazon or in some other way. Likes, follows, Patreon, locals, etc. I'd also enjoy hearing from you. You can email me at mattbishopwrites at gmail.com. All the links will be in the show notes. And with that, I will leave you with this thought from the sayings of the High One, Odin himself. And this is the Bellows translation available on sacred texts. Verse 1. Within the gates... Ere a man shall go, full long let him look about him, for little he knows where a foe may lurk, and sit in the seats within. Thank you.